I'm allowed to think past this, this line, this bubble, this, you know, should this little world that we've been cultivated into, it's like pushing yourself beyond that, like pushing some space around for yourself that you can stand and be really rooted in who you are and that it's necessary for you to be who you are. And that that's not saying you're better than anybody else. It's showing the people around you, oh, I can start taking these layers off of protection too. I'm allowed to shine too. Like I'm allowed to follow my heart. I'm allowed to believe in myself. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Seek the Joy podcast. Happy Seek the Joy Tuesday. I'm your host, Sydney Weiss. And guys, I don't know about you, but I am totally coming out of a turkey Thanksgiving coma right now. It was it was a really great day, and it started with um, going to a special Thanksgiving Day kundalini class with my dad, which I loved, and then um, we spent the rest of the day cooking and then family came over. But by, by Friday afternoon, I was, I was done. I was so tired. So I hope you guys had a really fun time and you were able to spend it with friends and family, but also that you were able to spend some time by yourself, just recharging and regrouping. And if Thanksgiving isn't your holiday, if it isn't your thing, I just hope you had a really great week and weekend. And I'm so excited about this week's episode because it's really coming at the perfect time with the holidays here and the holidays right around the corner. And so I'm so excited to introduce you guys to Trisha Huffman, aka your joyologist. And Trisha is a transformational coach and entrepreneur, and her mission is to inspire you to fully live your life and love yourself through it all. And she is totally doing that with her Instagram page and her product line. I don't know if you guys have seen her own your awesome affirmation deck and her mugs and her journals. I mean, I love everything she has. And she also has a new app called Own Your Awesome. And so Trisha is really sharing these messages of encouragement and transformation and owning who you are, owning your awesome and your joy and choosing to live your life the way that you want to choose to live it. We really talk about so much in this week's episode. I don't know if I can do it justice in the intro, so I'm going to let the conversation speak for itself. But before we dive into this week's new episode, you know I have to share with you the iTunes review of the week. And this week it comes from Danny Engelman. It says, joy has been sought. Oh, Danny, I love that. Okay, it says, Sydney is a beautiful, authentic light being who truly takes the time to dive deep with herself and those she interviews. I love tuning in any chance I get and hashtag Seek the Joy Tuesday has slowly become my favorite day of the week. You can tell there's a lot of love that goes into the making of each episode, which is so important and special. Okay, Danny, thank you. Thank you for this review of the podcast. I'm so grateful and I'm so glad that you have found the podcast and you're listening and you're enjoying it and you're resonating with it. It means more to me than you'll ever know. And so guys, if you have been enjoying this podcast or if you just started to tune in and you want to share a little love for Seek the Joy and support us, I would be so grateful if you would leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or really wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. When you do, just make sure to take a screenshot of that review and send it to sydney at seekthejoypodcast.com as my way to really say thank you. I will send you our guide for infusing more joy into your life as well as some Seek the Joy podcast stickers and it's just a really wonderful opportunity for me to connect with you one-on-one and just be able to thank you for being here and being part of this really wonderful and growing community. All right, guys, that's it. This conversation is really one of my favorites to date, and we really dig deep about what it means to own your awesome and be who you are, and when we really allow ourselves to shine brighter, to believe in ourselves and what we're capable of, it's amazing what happens. So without further ado, here is my conversation with Trisha Huffman, aka your joyologist. Trisha, aka your joyologist. And I mean, basically, if you can just think of your, people ask me all the time, like, well, what is that? What is yeah. your joyologist? And that my mission, that my everything and everything that I share and do is to inspire people to live a life full of joy and to realize that they can find that every day in every moment. And that's our choice. So it's like, 
my job, yeah. my work, my mission in the world is to spread inspiration and to like wake people up to be like, Hey, hello, this is your life. Live it. I know that that really sucked what happened <laughs> and not to ignore it, but how can you move through it to find the joy? Because life is freaking short. Yeah. And let's not waste it. Yeah. I love this. I love everything that you're about. And I love this term, your joyologist. <laughs> how, how did you end up in this space of being a, a joyologist and like, where did this journey all begin? Okay. So <laughs> the journey of how it began is like my life story. Um, <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's talk about your life yeah. story. I'll give it a little short in the summarization okay. to the point, but it basically, I can't, you know, it is all for me. I grew up in pain. I was always seeing doctors, I had stomach problems, chronic pain, didn't feel good. My mom yeah. was always taking me to the doctor. My doctor didn't know what was wrong with me. I got all sorts of, oh, she's fine, just making it up, or it's stress related, whatever. Like as a kid, um, it, it wasn't good. It didn't feel good emotionally. It didn't feel good physically. Yeah. <laughs> I'd also, when I was so that, like really coming to a head when I was 15, started high school. You know, high school isn't the best for a lot of people. That's where a lot of more pressure comes on. Of I have to, what do I look like? Am I saying the right things? I went boys or people to like me. Yeah. I want girls to like me, you know, no matter what sexual orientation you want people to like you. Basically, you just right. want people to like you. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you want people to be attracted to you in the, in that way. And, and in like, I want to be your friend or you're cool or you fit in, whatever that means, or you're unique. You want people to like you. And I don't know if that ever goes away. But it never goes school, away. But in high school, in it's high the school, worst. It is, it is really heightened. Um, so in that world, my home life, I mean, my have, I had amazing parents, but they weren't getting along. So that was just like, you know, part of it. I really hit a low and I definitely thought about like, what is the point a lot? And I actually really thought about ending my life. Mm. And that was serious and it feels so far away, but I still can clearly remember the moment that I chose to try life a different way because I was so close to being over it all. Yeah. Um, and what I decided was I'm really, really thinking about all of this. Then I needed like, what if I just tried life a different way? Like, what if I just stopped caring so much about what other people thought and like, just actually did what I wanted to do or say, said what I wanted to say, or like, you know, liked what I wanted to like, and didn't have to worry about, well, does that mean I'm cool still or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so I did, I just really started to live life more honestly. And, um, I, it was now looking back, it's feeling like I had so much physical pain that I didn't have room for the bullshit emotional pain that we create for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we really are so hard on ourselves making everything so hard, stressing ourselves out. And a lot of it having to do with wanting to be liked, mm -hmm. <laughs> Or am I making the right choice? Am I choosing the right thing? Am I wearing the right thing for whatever? So that was a big moment. And, and so I really started my self-love journey back then at 15. And that was a huge evolution. And so yeah, I started, then I followed my biggest dream was to be a live sound engineer, which is a very mm -hmm. unique <laughs> dream. And mm -hmm. I didn't actually know what it was. I just went to concerts and was like, I want to be doing, you know, like, I'd be like, the guitar is too loud or this. I was like, I was always analyzing the music mm -hmm. and knew that I wanted to be those people in control of the sound, even though I didn't know what it was. Went off to school, real, you know, started working at House of Blue Chicago for free in production after working in the retail store basically whatever. I worked really hard to make my dream come true. And it was a man's world. So I then got more faced with like, well, what is this young girl? I was mm -hmm. 19. You know, who, what does she think she's doing? Not being taken seriously. And that really taught me so many lessons in, in being grounded in who I was and just trusting and believing in myself and being open and aware for learning and not letting again, what everybody else was saying of me or thinking of me to stop me from my dream because it was every day being faced with that whatever tour was coming in that day it wasn't just the people that I worked with they became like my biggest family and supporters after being like yeah sure girl you know yeah right <laughs> you're gonna do this but then they saw that I really wanted to learn and that I was really trying hard but every day we had new bands coming in with new crews and they're mm. like who's the girl mm. 
you know? Yeah. <laughs> so every day being faced with that and that really every day I had to pick myself up and like be confident, but not too much of an ego, but you know, like laugh at the jokes, but mm. also like really try hard and really be grounded yeah. in who I was and believe in myself, which was a lot of, again, self-love yeah. and self-care emotionally. Along with this, I finally got diagnosed with fibromyalgia mm. when I was 18 and um, they gave me prescription medications. They didn't work. So I went to like how can I sort of make myself feel better? And that was with what I ate, with trying what I did with my body, like forcing myself to get movement in, even though it hurt, but then I would feel better afterwards. Starting yoga, like just starting to really, again, a new layer of self-care and self-love with what am I doing with my body yeah. and not just my thoughts. I didn't get hired by a big touring sound company. Um, I started touring with Grammy award-winning artists. Mm. Uh, I was living this dream and yeah. I was taking great care of myself on the road. And so I was like 25 doing monitors for Dolly Parton. Like wow. I was like, all right, I made it. Totally. <laughs> by the way, there's only like five girls that have like made it to that level at that wow. point. And that, there's probably some more now, but it's still really freaking rare. Right. Um, so I was like, this is awesome. I made it. But I also at that time was starting to feel like I wanted to do more, but people kept hiring me. Hmm. So I said yes, because I didn't like not like my job and it was awesome. I got to tour the world yeah. and, um, it was an amazing world to be a part of, but I also like was starting to know, like I need something more. Mm. And then my father passed away very suddenly in a freak weird way. And uh, that is why I constantly bringing up like, Hey, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow because mm. that was the, a big wake up call for me. And that even though I was so good about living my truth, following my dreams, taking care of myself, what it showed to me when my father passed away was that I just wanted to wake everybody else up. Mm, mm -hmm. Like, you don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. And traveling all the time, being in airports, being in different cities around the world, and just seeing people not happy, waiting in line for their coffee, being upset about, you know, of late, being delayed, whatever it was, just really just constantly being, even the people I was working with who had made their dreams come true, not happy. Even the people on stage selling out amphitheaters around the world, flying on private planes with amazing relationships, being able to buy the same pairs of shoes over and over again because they forgot they already had them and it was no big deal. That were living their biggest dreams, singing their songs that made everything that they had ever desired come true, seeing that they weren't happy. Mm. That was yeah. when I had to make a change and to realize that what I was doing for myself wasn't enough, that I wanted to wake up other people. So I took some time off because I needed to mourn, yeah, first yeah, of all. Of yeah. <laughs> and I knew that what I wasn't doing wasn't serving me anymore, doing sound. So I left a tour at the beginning of the tour. I was getting on a plane to Australia when I found out, hmm. went home for the funeral, got back on the plane to Australia and toured for three weeks before I finally was like, what are you doing, Trisha? Yeah. <laughs> so it took time, ended up taking like the rest of the year off, which was scary. I didn't have any money saved up. I was going to be on a tour for the rest of the year, but I just knew I needed this time to reset and to figure out what I was going to do next, even though I knew, you know, I knew the mission of what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how. Yeah. So I went home, I did yoga training. I took care of myself. I started cooking. I really explored a lot of different things. I cut the word should out of my vocabulary, mm -hmm. which was huge and transformative in so many ways because it made me ask myself, what do I want instead of what, what should I do today? Yeah. But I literally wouldn't let the word come out of my mouth. It was what should, what do I want to do? And that it was, I was asking myself what I wanted all day instead of what should I do? What does the world want me to do? What mm -hmm. have I been taught to do? What would make the, you know, yeah. the implication of that tiny word is huge. So what I created then was going back to the world I knew, which was taking care of these artists that, like I said, I had seen on the road, living their biggest dreams of it, still not feeling happy, fulfilled, still of joy every day. So that's where I started, which it seems kind of, odd to other people like how did you start this work for mm. these big artists yeah. but that was the world I knew intimately and that I saw and that I knew their life better than a lot of people and that it isn't as glamorous as people make it up to be because they're humans too yeah. and they yeah. have all the stuff we have but with like a 
microscope on them and heightened pressures that they put on themselves and other people put on themselves and everything like that. So it really was a valuable thing that I created. So I went back on the road and somebody else actually gave me the title of geologist. I was just like, look, this is what I have to (laughs) offer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure you're eating the best food. I'm going to make your dressing room nice and vibe it out. So it feels like a comfortable space. I'm going to put up inspirational quotes. We're going to do affirmations. I'm going to be like calling you out when you're in a bad mood. Like I'm not, you're not going to slam your door and everybody's going to walk around on, you know, tiptoes around you, which is what happens because the big boss, nobody like, I'm going to come in and I'm going to be like, what's going on? What, let's talk about this. What are you going to do about it? We did yoga. It was full body, full mind with them all the time. And I loved it. And so that's where I started. Somebody was just like, okay, so Trish is the Mm -hmm. joyologist and it stuck. And I now have never been able to think of a better word. There isn't a better word. I think it encapsulates (laughs) everything. And what's so cool about that word too, joyologist, is that I think it perfectly in some ways sums up your journey, which is so cool because you came from this space of being in pain, physical pain, emotional pain, and making a decision in that moment to shift that for yourself. And I think at such a young age too, because it's so easy to get locked into that pity party. It's so easy to get locked into that space of feeling like things won't change. I I don't know if I even have the power to change the things I want to change. So this evolution, this arc of where you've been to where you are now I think it sums up the word joyologist. And then part of that too is what I love so much about what you shared so far and then also what you share on your website and on your Instagram and all the messages that you put out there between the app and your products too is that it's all about keeping it real. Like you can be in the space of choosing joy in any given moment because that's what you deserve and that's a space to, you know, strive for. But let's be real. There are still difficult emotions, right? There's still going to be fear and sadness and anger or, you know, not feeling like I can do this today. And I think, I think that's part of being a joyologist too, is like being really honest about the lows and the highs. And, and so anyway, all of this to say, I think that word is perfect. And I think it sums it up so beautifully. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, that's what I think, what well, we're, as I said, we're, we're so hard on ourselves. But one of the ways that is we're really hard on ourselves is like we have like these expectations of ourselves like, okay, I found joy today. I found these things that worked for me. Maybe I eat this way. I meditate or I do yoga or I whatever. I do these things and I feel great. But I just got upset or I got, you know, like, (laughs) like, oh, but this is not so that like I failed. Like I failed. I'm not that joyful person. You know, that. but it's like that's the thing is accepting that, realizing that everybody no matter what is you're still going to get upset like no matter you know one of my favorite books is called after the ecstasy the laundry and it's like written (laughs) it's like short stories by these like dedicated buddhist monks and different people that have like dedicated their life to meditation and things like that and it's like these people who have dedicated everything to that like they still get upset like you're still gonna we're we're all human and as much as you know you could absorb yourself into uh meditation, whatever, all the self-care is like, you could be the epitome of all that, but life is still going to show up. Like things are mm-hmm. still going to happen where you're going to get annoyed. You're going to get upset. You're going to like have these things. And so like to not, and that's where I, I really do, you know, joy is such an amazing emotion word that because I don't happy to me feels like, well, just turn it upside down, be happy, like whatever mm-hmm. that feels to me like I don't like the word happy, yeah. <laughs> even though I realized I used it when I was talking, I, ca- I was like in my mind, like, ah, you said happy, like people weren't happy. That to me, that hmm. feels like just slap a smile on it, ignore everything and just keep on going. Yeah. Just sh- sh- be happy, ignore all of that. And I'm not for that at all, because I feel like eventually you're going to cripple and crumble. <laughs> like yeah. that you have to still feel and be like, oh, okay. And that really what I've noticed, I'm like, oh, okay. So I've like become a master at mindfulness of being present that doesn't mean I'm like super present in the room, but I'm like, I'm able to see, oh, okay, Trisha, you're annoyed right now. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. And so you're not wrong to be annoyed. Like what, what's annoyed you? And like, what's the reason? Is it an actual, like, because, you know, you had an expectation of this is how it's going to go and it didn't. Okay. Or you know, just trying to like realize, see what you're feeling when you're feeling it. So you can then move through it. Yeah. 
that acknowledgement piece, like acknowledging where you are and acknowledging what those emotions are and whether or not you're happy with them. Okay. I use the word happy, but whether or not you're okay with them, you're at peace with it. It's something that I think for lack of a better word, maybe aligns, right? With who you are, how you want to show up in the world and, and saying, Hey, it's okay that I'm existing in this space. That's maybe uncomfortable right now, but half the task, like you said, is, is seeing it and acknowledging it and then being able to move forward with it. And I love also what you said about expectations because I am certainly really guilty of putting too high of an expectation, whether it's on myself or on somebody else or on a situation. And so how have you been able to, I don't know, have you been able to craft more realistic expectations so that you don't get disappointed or (laughs) be hard on yourself in that way? I think it's hard to do. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge and uh, becoming more present to it does. But of course, there are still expectations created that I don't even realize Mm -hmm. I'm creating. Totally. But I do. And like, I I, I, I teach a course called Be Your Own Joyologist, which is a six-week program where I really go into all of these tools. And one week is, or one day, de- what one of the tools <laughs> focuses on these expectations and about how like creating expectations is basically just creating disappointments for yourself. Yeah. And so to create possibilities for yourself instead, and like okay. I'm going to send an email and I'm going to ask, but like, I'm not even going to ask because I'm just, they're just going to say no. Like, that's like, you know, that we like live into expectations that way where we like stop ourselves Mm -hmm. or like, I'm going to do this and I expect the other person to do that. Even though like, you know, a lot of people, especially women, I feel, uh, aren't able to actually ask what they want. So maybe do something expecting to get the result that they want. Like maybe if I do this for this someone, then they'll tell me how awesome I am or they'll thank me or they'll tell Mm -hmm. me that they love me or then they'll offer to do this for me. But instead of just being clear with like what you actually want and then you get disappointed with disappointed because what you wanted to happen didn't happen, but because you were just like creating these expectations and making up that like everybody understands this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. One of the things, examples I share about expectations and how we do it so often and how such a small thing can like really upset us is sharing the story about years ago when my partner and I didn't live together, I was living in LA and he was living in Newport beach, which it is about an hour, Mm -hmm. an hour and a half away if you have traffic. And so like I was going to go on there on the weekend and Usually when I went down there, I'd like drive down there early enough and we would go out to dinner, you know, that, that Friday. And then I'd stay the weekend down there. So it was a Friday. I was getting ready to go down there and I was real hungry, but I'm not going to eat anything because we're going to eat dinner down there. We didn't have a conversation about that. That's the expectation I created Mm -hmm. from what had happened in the past. I get down there. I'm so hungry. I'm thinking about where we could eat. I walk in and he's eating a burrito and I am freaking pissed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Like it's such a small thing. And it's like, well, yeah, he could have like said, Hey, I'm hungry. I'm going to go get a burrito. Like, so I could place all the blame on him. He's bad. He's wrong. How dare you go eat without asking me? How dare you not ask me if we're going to eat, which is what we do a lot of times that blame everybody. Or I could take responsibility. Well, I didn't communicate clearly. I didn't check in and say, Hey, I'm hungry. We're going to eat when we get down there. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so a lot of times with if I'm not able to see that I've created expectation that afterwards when I get in that dis- disappointment mode is to see where can I take responsibility. And it's often that I didn't communicate that I wasn't clear. Yeah. So like, you know, you can still like, if you want to like really blame the other person, well, he must not be decent human because he did not ask me before he got a burrito. Like, but he was just hungry and maybe I was coming down later, like he, whatever. But like the responsibility is like, I could have, but then, so I immediately got upset took responsibility. But then I also realized, Hey, now that he's already eaten, already eaten, I don't have to like think about what, where we're going to eat so that we're both happy. I can just get, <laughs> go get what I want. So like, then I could take it as cool. Well, now I can go eat whatever I want from the place I want to get food at because yeah. you won't want to eat there because it's too healthy, this right. whatever for you. So just spin it that way. But it's really like seeing where can I take responsibility for this? Yeah. Where is my part in this? And before that, when seeing when you're creating expectations, is again, just trying to create different possibilities for things. That process of looking at the different possibilities for yourself, I think it can be, um, I don't know, I think it can be kind of overwhelming and crippling too. I mean, I have this experience all the time where I'm like, okay, it could go this way or it could go that way. And it's interesting that my default as what to, as to what feels more comfortable for possibilities is the negative is they won't right. respond. They won't like me. They'll reject me. It won't happen. But it's more uncomfortable 
to think about, wow, this could go really well. They could say, yes, I could be, you know, offered that job or whatever, right. whatever it is. So moving into that space of being more comfortable with that positive outcome or accepting that that is a potential for ourselves, it's a really interesting journey. And I think so many of us are walking down it and I think we want to move into that space of what's possible and the joy within that and, and celebrating ourselves within those moments. But it, it's a journey to, to walk that. So it's interesting to hear you talk about that and how, you know, half of that I think is about taking responsibility, right, for yourself and your emotions and your expectations. And, and I think just in general, what you're sort of putting out into yeah, the Yeah, totally. And what you were feeling is so common, you know, that it's still – often can be a default for me is like oh you know like I'm not even going to send the email because they're just going to say no that we just default to the well, no that's not but then allowing yourself to just a little give yourself a sneak peek of the possibility of they could reply and they could say yes and like to step into that possibility and to be like who am I who's the person that can accept that and can own that and like that's the person that I aim to be, not the person that just automatically gets diminishes by ideas that I'm not even letting to come to fruition because I'm not putting them out into the world at all. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it really does just comes back to that. What, you know, what motivated me to make the first dream come true is that it really just like have to take that leap into believing in yourself. And that's what my whole motto of own your awesome really goes so deep and so vast and, and that's why I named the app that it's a mm -hmm. daily inspiration app called own your awesome and it's really just like being so comfortable and confident in who you are and then allowing yourself to see those possibilities that yeah. we've been made to make the default be like just stay over here where it's comfortable or I maybe don't want to like own my awesome or shine brighter because I don't want anybody else to feel bad mm. or something because that's if I own my awesome or if I start to believe in myself and what I'm capable of, am I acting like I'm better than other people? But what yeah. I choose to see it as is that you are then allowing other people to be able to see that within themselves. Mm -hmm. it's that by you being able to say they might say yes well, this could happen for me I'm capable of this to believe in yourself that you're stepping into that I don't see it as like an ego thing of like hey look at me I'm over here owning my awesome yeah. I'm better than you it's like this grounded in hey I'm safe to be me yeah hey I'm allowed to think past this this line this bubble this you know should this little world that we've been cultivated into it's like pushing yourself beyond that like pushing some space around for yourself that you can stand and be really rooted in who you are and that it's necessary for you to be who you are and that that's not saying you're better than anybody else it's showing the people around you oh, I can start taking these layers off of protection too. Hmm. Like I'm allowed to shine too. Like I'm allowed to follow my heart. I'm allowed to believe in myself. Yeah. All of that is really powerful. I think when we give ourselves permission to stand in our awesome, it definitely gives other people, I think the permission or they feel the permission to do the same for themselves. It's interesting what you just said because it can go one of two ways. You know, we, we often worry about, how it'll make somebody else feel, but we assume it'll make them feel the negative as opposed to the mm -hmm. positive. We don't expect that it's going to make someone else feel like they can stand in their power or their truth or their awesome or their light. We assume it's going to make them feel bad. And so what we do in turn is we keep ourselves small. We don't allow ourselves to shine. We don't allow ourselves to step into what it is that we want to do or how we want to show up in the world. And it's interesting to see sort of the tide shift in this direction of, no, stand in your awesome, stand in who you are, be brave and confident within that. And it'll allow someone else to do the same. It's interesting that it's moving in that direction yeah and I'm so so glad and I think you know I'm still like a laugh or like shake my head in confusion when I see people mm. being like still talk about like self-care and self-love being like selfish mm. mm -hmm. you know I'm like wait is that still a thing do people still think think of it like that yeah but I get it and even like you know 
I get it even today as like a mom, I experienced it for my, my myself of like this small thing that I even posted on Instagram today, where it's like, my kids love berries <laughs> so much and like they'll eat the whole container and I love berries too, but I want to let myself have the berries because my ne- kids love them. So like, I need to save them all for my kids. And it was like a funny way that I caught myself today. Like yeah. because, uh, that's me putting my kids before myself. And like you, people might be like, well, of course you're a mom. Like that's what you're supposed to do. You have to put your kids before you. And I'm like, reminding myself that through this small thing of the berries is mm-hmm. that we have to put ourselves first, even yeah. as a mother, as a business owner, as a boss, like whatever it is that because by putting yourself first, then I'm taking better care of my kids because I'm nurturing myself. So whether you have kids or not, like, but this is my, like, I know we all hear it, the putting your oxygen mask on yourself first, but, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, I'm like, I said it, but I'm not going to say that it's more, <laughs> but of it's like, a really good visualization, you know, you know, but yeah, but what I like to remind myself when I might get into that, Oh, I can't do this for myself or, you know, this is selfish or whatever sort of mode is that, but by doing this, Like, which version of me are people going to get? My clients or my kids? Those are the people that, you know, like the people paying me (laughs) to show up for them. Or the children that I've created are my top, you know, things that I can look at. So whoever it is in your life, what's the, who's the Trisha that they're going to get? Are they going to get one that's present, that's lit up, that's excited to life, that feels energized and is present? Or are they going to get the one that's annoyed, tired, like, can feel like all over the place because I haven't been putting myself first and taking care of myself and like which which person do I want the world to experience so it's not selfish I'm thinking of everybody else by putting totally. my, taking care of me <laughs> yeah no I think that's an interesting point that you just brought up because it is often viewed as you're taking time for yourself and then taking time for yourself means you're being selfish but it is that visualization of the mask on a oxygen mask on a plane it's like if you are not nurturing yourself and honoring yourself and taking care of yourself, it is even more difficult to do the same for somebody else. And so the more that you can do that for yourself, the better you're able to show up in the world. Yeah. And I think where people have another hard time is that they see, see that taking time for themselves, doing things for themselves, that has to be this like big, like, let me take the whole day, yeah. take the whole evening, whatever. I have to go on a retreat or whatever. And that I have now gotten better at like figuring out things that take a couple minutes you know, that I can't, you know, I do have to take more time for myself, but also it's just like, if somebody's listening and they're like, well, I can't do that because of this, that mm-hmm. like, just start with taking a couple minutes for yourself that so often we're like, I don't have time that, oh, which is another, I can't think of, I don't know if I'll think of the exact quote right now, but there's this quote that I love so much. I might almost want to even look it up, but it's sort of, uh, I'm going to have to send it to you afterwards to add yeah. to your show notes or yeah. something. Yeah. But um, by saying, I don't have time is saying, I don't want to. Mm. So when people say, I don't have time to take care of myself, or I don't have time to that, that really like you're saying, I don't want to, because we have time. We just have to prioritize the time or make a choice of, I have three minutes. I can wake up three minutes earlier, or I can take this three minute bathroom break while I'm at work to, you know, breathe or to stretch or to listen to a song. I love that. Like you can find things that bring you back to yourself and to do for yourself and that you will make the time. And once you start making any bit of time, then you will see how much it affects you and then you can make more time. So when you're telling yourself, I don't have time for that, or I don't have time for that person. I don't have time to take care of myself. I don't have time to cook myself healthy meals. I don't have time for, you know, whatever it is. You're just saying, I don't want to. Yeah. This is like a huge light bulb moment (laughs) for me. Seriously, because (laughs) it is really synonymous with, I don't want to. So if you flip that on yourself, you're saying to yourself, I don't want to take care of myself. And so this is like a huge light bulb moment. So I'm totally going to add that quote um, to the show notes because I think we have to be real with ourselves. What is it that we really want to do? Do we really want to improve? Do we really want to grow? Do we really want to take care of ourselves? Or do we want to kind of sit in the space that we're in? And I think that's a lot of what Seek the Joy is about and what being a joyologist is about is moving closer to that space of who you want to be and seeking that joy in your life. But the first step is really getting real and saying, is this actually something I even want to do? Yes. Or is it something that I just keep seeing other people do? So I feel like I should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And there's no shame in saying, "I, I don't, I don't want to move out of the space I'm in yet, but I think it's about honoring and acknowledging that, you know, and saying, yeah, this is actually where I'm recognizing totally. 
like that, that it's a choice you're making. Yeah. It's, it's a choice you're making. Like, okay, I see now that I'm actually don't want to because I'm not ready yet or because this is going to create this discomfort and I'm not ready for that. And so like, that's the first step to everything is noticing it. I could not agree more. And then once you notice it, then you can make a decision as to what feels the most comfortable to you. And sometimes it's about pushing beyond what's actually comfortable. I mean, to be honest, what's comfortable for me is like probably to never to go out and do anything or meet anybody or, or to send emails right. to people to be on your podcast. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it's, it's not always comfortable, but you've got to push yourself beyond what's comfortable and that's where the growth happens. And that's when you can really that's start. That's where the joy is too. Exactly. Yeah, like let's imagine you being comfortable sitting in your house and never leaving and never <laughs> emailing anybody or never like that right. doesn't sound very joyful, right? It might no. be like a nice week or a couple of days of like, oh, totally. it's really nice to not have any you know, not doing anything and whatever, but like the joy is beyond that little bit of discomfort. Yeah. Joy is totally beyond your comfort zone. So it's about noticing what's comfortable for you and then being willing to push beyond it. And so this kind of takes me to something I've been meaning to ask you this whole time, which <laughs> is when somebody is looking to become, I guess, a joyologist in their own life, and I know you have a course on all of this, but if there's one thing that they could do today to start to move in that direction, you know, what, what would be that one thing um, that you would say, this is where it should really start? Uh, <laughs> no, I laughed because I laughed because what do you, you know, I'm like, okay, just one thing. Cause of course I've got <laughs> a million things, but the one thing, the one thing that I already brought up and I laughed so hard because you said <laughs> what should, Oh my God. Did I say do? should? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what, so what can people say, do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I was going to say is to be mindful of that word. <laughs> mm. I'm never going to forget that. From now on, it's going to be, did I just say that word should? Because that is such a powerful word to eliminate from your vocabulary. That and try. Should yeah, and there's try. So there's so and many. Should, yeah. Should was the gateway for me to really being present. Yeah. Of my thought to my speech, because like I said, when I decided, and I don't even know, it just came to me, you know, when after that, in that time, after my father passed away and I was just sort of in this like, okay, I know I want to do something else, but I don't know what space that I don't know. I was just like, I'm done with the word should I don't, I never, I didn't read it anywhere. I was just <laughs> like, no. And I committed so strongly, like I said, that I wouldn't let the word come out of my mouth. So I'd be like, I should in a conversation <laughs> with somebody. And it was amazing to see and still see how much that one thing shifted my life. Like I said, I was then asking myself, what should I eat today? Oh, like should feels like, oh, okay, what should I eat? What's right? Like what's, yeah. what is everybody telling me to eat? What blah, blah, blah. Or like, what do I want to eat? Is shoulders back claiming, okay. And it might come to the same thing. And so maybe you're trying to feel better. And so you want to eat healthier. You want to make healthier choices. So like I should eat this salad. And then, so you can either take that in a step, like if your automatic want isn't the salad, then walk through, well, like, why do I, I want to feel good. I want to feel alive. I want to nurture my body. I want to eat the salad. Yeah. But then there's also the, yeah, I know all of that, but right now I really want that pizza mm -hmm. and a lot like to be okay with that. Cause also then want allowing yourself to want it and then allowing yourself to enjoy it was a big breakthrough then for me because so often we make that choice of like I'm going to treat myself and then you shove it in your mouth yeah. and then you feel shame yeah guilt shame <laughs> or you feel regret everything it, but yeah like enjoy what you're doing so like choose it or you know so again it was taking me through those steps that way it cut out um procrastination you know like cleaning up my house, doing the dishes. Like, I'm not like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to do the dishes <laughs> at any like moment in my life. But do I love having a clean house? I love having everything feel put away. So when I'm in the moments of like, oh, I should do the dishes that it's more like, well, this is, I want that end result. So I want to yeah. do the dishes. And then I go and I bust out doing the dishes and I might turn on music. Like I make it enjoyable for myself. I do the dishes. Like whatever it is, like, oh, I'm really comfortable on this couch and comfortable mm -hmm. <laughs> just sitting here, but I do want to feel better. Uh, I'm going to go. I want to do 20 minutes of exercise, not an hour. Like I'm just going to commit to 20 minutes like that. It really like I want not I should exercise. Yeah. I do want to like it makes you again see that it's your choice, that everything mm -hmm. is your choice. 
it then showed up for a big gateway for me of I am allowed. Once I started to take out I should and it went to I want most of the time, like I said, what was the word I, that would fit the sentence? Yeah. Then it was like, oh, I'm allowed to do this. And then it, this is how I then created my career, too, was that I wasn't what should I do next? What should I create? What should I, what do I want? And then because of this, I said it became like the gateway to me being so present of all the words I was using and what I was thinking in my head. So it like eliminating that one word did so much and it made me so mindful of the words I was using, what I was doing, just everything. Yeah. And that's why when I, you know, like that I really promoted and when like, but I think it's so valuable and people, I think, take it so lightly and there's like, uh huh, uh huh, huh. That word has so much energy in it, we don't even realize it. And that mm -hmm. by eliminating it, you can really shift so much in your life. Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking about the word should. It's everywhere. Once you become present, yeah. it's everywhere. And the emotions that are attached to it, I think, are not emotions that you want no. right and they're so, like feel heavy i feel like exactly. shoulders are down yeah like everything's piled on top of yeah. you weighing you down yeah yeah so i would say so what i'm going to start doing and i hope anyone that's listening will start to do this too is that if there are, are words that you use in your life all the time whether it should or need or even I think, to be honest, I think that needs to go from my vocabulary also because mm -hmm. when you say I think versus I believe or I know, it's a totally different energy. But finding those words and then thinking about the emotions that you've attached to them or what is naturally attached to them. And then is it keeping you kind of stagnant in where you are or is it helping to move you forward or move you backwards? So should is keeping me in the space I'm in now, but saying I want, it moves me forward. So it feels like the gateway to everything is eliminating that word and then choosing because it's all about a choice. And I think that's where being your joyologist comes in is about choosing joy, choosing the emotions, choosing how you want to show up and then choosing it over and over and over again, because at the end of the day, you're the one living your life, not somebody else. Yes. And it's just, yeah, how you said at the end of the day, you're the only one living your life. It's like, let's just spend a moment with that because again it's just i think that those phrases and thoughts get thrown a lot around a lot especially be instagram is so amazing because you can get so much inspiration mm -hmm. and stuff there but i think sometimes because of that sayings like that and quotes lose their meaning because you're just like yeah, yeah, yeah i've seen people post stuff like that totally. forever yeah but like take a moment and sit with that right now you are the only one living your life so what are you doing about it are you going through the motions trying to fit into someone else's version of what your life is supposed to look like mm -hmm. are you actually and what should look like and what you should be doing to take care of yourself because things don't work for everyone not everything is for everyone like you don't have to trust yourself mm -hmm. listen to yourself ask yourself is this working yeah. for me yeah. There is so much power in making the choice to design your own life and to create your own rules. And I've had so many conversations with friends about this recently, but it's about this concept of timelines. And at this age, you know, most people are doing this. Mm -hmm. So should I be doing that too? Or should my life be looking that way? Hmm. I think it's interesting because once you take a step back and you choose to design your life the way that feels good to you, and by feeling good, I mean you know you're following the things that light you up and bring you joy because you're excited to do them. You feel in a way that you're living your passion and choosing that and designing your life and creating your own rules. There's so much power in it. And you have really done that. I mean, I'm reflecting on what you shared at the very beginning of our conversation about how you knew you wanted to be in music and in sound and there weren't very many or many women at all in that space and how you really created this opportunity for yourself and how it's evolved. I hope for so many, it'll serve as a really beautiful example of what's possible when you choose to follow your own rules or design your own path. Because if you had let the fact that there weren't very many women, you know, in that space stop you, I don't know if you would have become the joyologist. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? No, and, that, and it wasn't just, you know, and that it's also like a daily thing again that it wasn't yeah. just like that letting that stop me but any number of the one person that like gave me some comment that made me feel less than yeah. because maybe I you know like I was a girl I was young and I didn't know enough yet it wasn't just though any of those things that like any sort of comment that I had to keep believing in myself that for me to sell what I knew I was capable of to artists on the road 
to, you know, whatever, one-on-one clients, whatever, that you have to believe in yourself first and foremost, no matter what, no matter what you're creating in the world, no matter what you're up to, that you have to believe in yourself and that back to the own you're awesome Mm -hmm. the reason I was so passionate about creating this app is that it's I know again that we have so many ways these days to find inspiration and motivation but it's just like to have these different they're like I have a a card deck as well which Mm -hmm. I love the affirmations but this is like hundreds of you can get to it oh that's funny oh I just opened the app and the one I got was you get to choose what you believe is impossible. Oh. You get to choose what you believe is possible. Feel free to change your views. <laughs> I mean, that is in- the timing. Holy <laughs> crap. That's amazing. Okay. I'm going to screenshot that Please. and send it to you. <laughs> Please do. Oh my God. We need like the timestamp. That's amazing. It's a confirmation in my book, you know, it's a confirmation of the fact that you have to start with not that you have to, you get to choose to start with believing in yourself and you get to choose to start there no matter what anyone says. You get says. to choose what believe is impossible. Yeah. So, and yeah, so the app was like to have these like little notes to yourself of like, hey, yeah, okay. Like so that you can recheck back in with yourself and yeah. be like, where am I? Because again, like I have to redo this almost every day. Those Grammy award-winning artists that are writing their own songs, living their biggest dreams, doing those things. It's not like, oh, well, once I have this success, once I meet the love of my life, once I do this, then I'm going to like, everything's going to be golden. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) But like, it's constantly something that you're going to need to work on. And it's going to have to come back to believing in yourself. For someone that's listening, who might be struggling with that aspect of believing in themselves, where is a good place for them to start? For me, the first thing that comes to mind is it's about getting to know who you are, but I would be interested for you, you know, where's a good place to start? Yeah. And, and what you said is true is like getting to know who you are, which a lot of people, I think they get lost on that because of how much we take in yeah. and because of the world of shoulds, which brings me back to the should want thing. Mm-hmm. But um, one of my favorite things to do, which took me a long time to get into is journaling and I don't know if you know of the Artist Way book and Morning Pages. Mm, When I first found out about Morning Pages, this was a way that I finally was able to get into journaling. It's basically, and how she says to do it is first thing in the morning. That's a great way to do it. For me, it's now become anytime I don't feel like I'm great. Like Mm. I don't feel myself. I don't feel great. I don't feel present. Some things bother me. Then pull out a journal and a pen and it's to write, to fill up three pages I say three sides of a page. I don't know if that's how it's meant to be, but three sides of a page and just to like force yourself to write. And that it's like, you don't stop. There's no paragraphs. You don't, it doesn't have to, that you're not writing a diary entry Mm -hmm. that just like seriously vent what's in your mind. Like, Oh, I'm so hungry right now. I can't believe that I forgot to send that email. Oh, that person just posted this on Instagram and it's making me feel like shit. Well, wait, why is it making me feel like shit? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like to really just, allow yourself to get everything outside of yourself it's the next best form of like coaching like having a coach because like that's I think yeah. so why coaching is so much of the one it's not even what the person is saying back to you but the fact that you're just actually opening up and saying things but just seeing that page is a safe place and that to vent it all out and to allow yourself to jump around like oh I need to go to the grocery store oh my God, I can't, why didn't that person reply to that text? What does that mean? Like to really just let all of your thoughts, the bouncing around thoughts out onto the page, that I feel like is one of the best ways to get to believing in yourself because it's getting everything out, but turning it around then with affirmations. So Mm -hmm. my whole product line, the app as well is based with affirmations. So I didn't want to just say affirmations because affirmations can be hard if you're not open to them and if you're not seeing what you're actually feeling because where they're most valuable is when you're turning around a negative thought that you're telling yourself of like I'm not enough no one will ever love me whatever it is and by venting that out onto the page and it's so important to allow yourself to get the negative stuff it's hard when I first started journaling it was hard for me because I'm like well no I'm positive Hmm. I'm uplifting I can't like I can't allow these negative things to come out on the page, even though it's like, you can rip it up, you know, burn it. Nobody has to see this. You're never going to read it again. Your handwriting doesn't have to be nice. It's just by getting it out of you, you are, you are then 
paying attention to what you're thinking and feeling. And so then that's where you can move through it and transform it. I'm tying those two together with allowing the journaling to get that out. Allow yourself to say the yucky thoughts that you're feeling, you know, because if it's in your head, then it's real. And if we try to ignore them, then we, we don't really have the most space. You can just try on affirmations and try on positive thinking. But if you're just ignoring the negative stuff you're telling yourself and it's still like constantly popping its head back up there and you're just like, no, 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 then you're not Mm going to really be able to transform yourself and move through it. Yeah. So let the ugly stuff come out on the page, rip it up, burn it, whatever, and then turn it around. And I like to do this even like at the end of the journaling. So then you saw, oh, I'm telling myself I'm not enough. Then write, I am enough over and over and over again and feel it and call yourself. I am complete. I am worthy. I am my dreams. And the affirmations, it's important that you're choosing one that actually like excites you. Yeah. If you're saying one and it doesn't vibrate with you, like if it makes you a little bit uncomfortable, that's a good thing. Go with that. But if you're like, I am love, that sounds nice. I don't care. You know, (laughs) I am magic. If that speaks to you, I am a badass. If that speaks to you, then, you know, use that one. And that creating one, shifting ones, I, you know, the app has a ton of them. I have affirmation deck, you can Google affirmations and have a ton of there, but you can also create your own. But again, the most important one is to choose ones that elevate and excite you and even make you a little uncomfortable at first. Totally. And I think it's so important what you, it's so important what you just shared because we often miss that piece of letting all the stuff out. It's hard. Yeah. And so that piece of putting it out there, putting it on paper, whether you journal it or by hand or type it up, whatever feels good, only from there can you then be able to transform it because you're able to see it. Even the app has a journaling section in it. And it's like so, kind of oh like God, sneaky, if you're in the app, if you go to like the, you know, dot, 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 there's a journal. So that yeah. I prefer pen and paper. It feels like transmitted for me, but like, like we, but that also stops people like, oh, I have to have my perfect journal and be my perfect spot and blah, 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 and journal. Like, no, you can be wherever you are, yeah. pull out your phone, open the note section, open, you know, open the app and write in the notes and just like, let it out. And yeah. it is uncomfortable. It is a challenge. But again, like that's where the transformation comes from is letting that stuff out to see it, to be able to okay. transform it into something else. Yeah. Is there an affirmation that you're working with right now that is resonating with you? Uh, it rotates. I, 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 a lot of times come back to, I am a badass. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love that one. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, I, and if you are familiar with me and my line, there are some cuss words that get thrown around. I <laughs> will blame that my background of like the rock and roll background and no, I love even it. my color scheme is like white, black and gold. Uh, you know, it, it's not, and that was important for me too. That's one of the reasons I first committed my own affirmation deck was that positivity wasn't like new even then now it's way more present I think because of Instagram which is awesome but you know like inspirational motivational messages but I was into that stuff but anything I could find product wise was something that I was like embarrassed to have on my table because it was Mm. like purple and butterflies and not that that's embarrassing for everyone that was just like not what I resonated with so it was important for me to make products that made people feel good that made me feel good but also that I'd be like proud to post up and be like yeah Yeah. No. And I think what's so cool about what you just shared is that it's about figuring out or finding what resonates for you or with you. And it's okay if it's not what resonates for the person next to you or, or for your best friend or whomever, whoever it might be. And so to kind of take us home, I have to ask you the question that I ask everyone that comes on, which is what is your biggest dream? Oh, that changes probably moment to moment. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Day to day for sure. Oh, what is my biggest dream? And I can name like I do, you know, biggest dream is to write a book to share all of Mm. these things that I know I have within me to share and that I teach in my courses and everything too. Because I think not just like to have like, I've written a book, not even that, but just it's an amazing way to be able to get information out to people. And I love books and sharing Mm -hmm. it it as my personal stories and not just like, do this, do this, do this. Cause that's where I resonate is in sharing the personal stories. And that's how I share So that, you know, that would be the biggest, biggest dream, uh, best-selling author, but mm-hmm. really the biggest dream, you know, if I really want to stop because that seems kind of frivolous in the big picture is just for me to keep staying connected yeah. <laughs> with myself and this evolution of who I am as a human, as a mother now, as everything in that, like, to just keep being being able to be present mm-hmm. <laughs> to so that yeah. I can enjoy my life and not get caught up in all the bullshit. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. Staying present and I showing will get up. Distracted by the bullshit. As you, well. <laughs> you and me both. I love this. I love your dreams. I love everything that you've shared. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on Seek the Joy podcast. I'm going to include all of your information from where everyone can find the app and your products and uh, your Instagram and your website. Everything is going to go in the show notes. And thank you so much. We're going to have to do this again. I think we have so much yes, more to talk about. Thank you so I know. Thank you so much. It, all, it went by so fast. So and fast. I really enjoyed being able to share it all with you and, and the listeners. I love this conversation. I mean, I lost track of time when we were recording. I didn't even realize an hour went by and that's when you know it was a really good conversation. And I'm so grateful for everything that Trisha shared and for coming on the podcast and sharing so much of her journey with us. And every time I listened to the episode, there was another moment that stuck with me. And I think that's how you know it was a really good conversation. So if there was a moment that really landed with you and resonated, share it with us on our social media pages. We are at Seek the Joy Podcast everywhere. And guys, if you want to support this show, if you want to support my work on this show, I would be so grateful if you would share Seek the Joy Podcast with your friends and your family or on your social media networks. Make sure to hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating and review. I can't even begin to tell you guys just how how impactful those reviews are and how much they have changed my life and the course of the show. And it also really gives people, I think, an idea of what we're all about over here at Seek the Joy Podcast. And we're also on Patreon. I'll include the link to our Patreon page in the show notes for this week's episode. And I'm just really grateful to be able to do this and to share my journey and the Seek the Joy podcast journey with you guys. And thank you for being here. Thanks for listening. And I think that's it. That's all I've got. Thank you again, Trisha, for this awesome conversation. Thank you guys for being here. If you made it to this point, you are my BFF for life. I'm so grateful. And I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your week. And I will see you right back here for another Seek the Joy Tuesday. Tuesday.